You're welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I'm very excited about this guest that I have because the conversation we are having is one that every young person should be interested in. Many of you are looking to run to Canada, but how about being relevant in Nigeria such that the international organization can see you and open doors for you as well. He's an international speaker. He goes around the world speaking up and down. He is the founder of Head Start Africa. He is a social media influencer and many more things. His name is John Obidi and he's my guest today. Today we're looking at a Achieving global relevance from a third world country. Thank you for joining us, John. Thank you for having me, Olive. <laughs> international speaker. I'm proud to be. Please, can you at least shake my hand? So I'm not. Wow, international high shake. That'll be a hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. So you go. You 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 just came back from Brazil, if I'm correct. Yes. And how has the experience been? Being noticed from Nigeria, being picked out. And th this is not your first time speaking in Brazil. I re I remember. Yes. How has that been? The whole experience for you it will be surreal for me. Well, it was Brazil and then Ghana. That's the most recent one. I gave the keynote speech at the regional convening of the Mandela Washington Fellowship. So yeah, the experience has been great. It's what I think every young person should achieve or should aspire for and know that your value is not just for your locality, but your value is for the world. And I think that Africa and Nigeria specifically should start to export more of our knowledge to the world. Okay, we will come back to delving into what your experience speaking in Brazil was and, you know, the funniest things that happened while you stayed in Porto Alegre. Yes. That is the house pronounced? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but let's start with, you know, what you do. You, you're the founder of Head Start Africa. But beyond that, you're many other things. Tell us many other things that you do. I'm an online business consultant and uh, most famously known as the founder of Head Start Africa, one of the largest mentoring platforms in Nigeria. And so what we do is that we help young people understand how to achieve success even from a third world country. And achieving success from a third world country is very important to me. It's one of my biggest passions because there is this invisible fence around third world countries. And so we are less able to participate in the global economy. We are less able to contribute equally to the global state of affairs. Africa has been mostly seen as uh, beggars, so to speak. And so we mostly take from the international community and we don't contribute as much, not because we don't want to, but because there are certain stumbling blocks that do not allow us to um, have such an equal playing field. And so what I do a lot at Hair South Africa is that I've been able to identify some of these stumbling blocks. I've been able to identify the antidotes to these stumbling blocks and get as much of our people as possible to get involved in the global affairs. Let's look at some of these stumbling blocks. You know, what, what would be the top three that would readily come to mind? Wow, the top three. Uh, the top one, first of all, is the lack of infrastructure. We're in 2019, and we're still talking about access to electricity, and we're talking about internet access. Now, internet access is the biggest hindrance. Now, the way a third world African sees the internet is different from the way a first world native sees the internet, right? Now, a typical American or Englishman sees the internet as an ocean upon which ships can travel. And those ships are your goods, your services, your information, you can build schools, you can transport things on that superhighway. But a third world African, a Nigerian, sees the internet as a bottle of water that can finish. So they are telling so, And because it actually can finish. Yes. So they're always saying, oh, how many MB is left? You know, an American doesn't know what MB means. Doesn't know what's two gigabyte. What does that mean? I mean, you're asking me to send you a video. I'm like, well, wait till I get back yeah. home where I have wife, um, unlimited Wi-Fi. Unli yes. I can't send it on my mobile data. Exactly. And even the unlimited is conditional, right? And so the kind of ideas, the quality of ideas a typical first world native would innovate would be much more qualitative than that which a Nigerian would. Not because we are not that creative, but because we don't have most people, most of our people don't have that infrastructure. We are limited to maybe five gigabytes. And so there's that scarcity mentality, even as regards abundance of ideas. So that's one. And so one of the antidotes to that, because I don't want to just harp on about the problems, one of the antidotes to that is to take advantage of the co-working space culture, especially in cities like Lagos. It's really taking off in Lagos. I remember when I first got to Lagos in 2014, the first thing I did was to look for a co-working space that was affordable and where I could have unlimited access and internet access. And for me, that was the, at the time, was the co-creative hub at Yaba, but one of the few at the time. But between then and now, we've, have, a lot we, have up. we've had a proliferation of them. And so I tell a lot of people that, yo, don't sit in your home and wait for the year you'll get electricity. 
or the or how long your data plan is going to last pay a, a substantial a, a small fee to any of the co-working spaces and use their infrastructure and then you'll be able to participate equally on the internet as regards contributing solutions great so you are yeah. looking for the you've spotted out the problem and the solution so one of them is internet, internet and the way out of that is to make use of the co-working spaces yes. because those also come with 24 hours internet yes. so if you're paying for a month you're getting internet for a month if you're paying for a week or a day you're getting yes. internet for the whole time yes. that you're there so what are the two other problems that readily come to mind yes and again there's this temptation for viewers to hear this solution and be like oh but you know the the long-term solution is is for the country to fix power well for citizens like you and i all we can do is to work around what we have right now i am not the person in charge of power no young Nigerian is going to be the one to fix power, but while that is being yeah, worked hopefully on... hopefully a young Nigerian will be the one to yeah, fix power in the nearest yeah, future. Yeah, but while the nearest future is still in view, yes. we need to get work done. <laughs> so that's why I'm giving like maybe short-term solutions as they might appear to be. So the next one is every... Now, this is something that most people don't even notice, but the internet that you browse as a Nigerian is not the internet and American browsers, right? So you might go to certain websites and it says that the website is down. It's not down. It's down to you. <laughs> and so that's the problem. That's okay. We've, we've innovated around that. And so we have what we call VPNs. And so a VPN is a virtual private network. It's a kind of software you can install on your phone and on your laptop that can um, change what we call your IP address. And so you can change your location to appear to be from a first world country. It's very legal. And I think that every Nigerian who is serious about contributing value and receiving value on the internet should have a VPN installed so that the fence around the third world will not apply to you. Great. Okay, um, I think this uh, basically this conversations have centered around the internet and the inavailability, uh, inavailability or lack of it there of in Nigeria. Let's talk about how you can actually position yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at you, you're doing amazing work here in Nigeria. You won the Future Awards Prize for New Media last year, 2018. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And you won several other awards before and after that. Yes. But you've been able to get international attention. You're not the only one doing what you're doing. There's several other young people. So what would you say stood you out? And what tips would you give to other young people who want to stand out just as you have done? Okay, so one, one problem with Nigerians and a number of young Africans too doing great things is that they feel like talking about their work is boasting or is bragging. And so people like to just hide and keep quiet about their achievements. But that's not the way it should be. You're supposed to talk about it and let people know. If people don't know what you're doing, then you're winking in the dark. They have to know about it. And so every young Nigerian doing great stuff should have a publicly accessible profile. Now, people jump at this because they're like, does that mean I need to get a website? Well, yes or no. You don't need a full website to have your work publicly visible. There's a website called about.me. So it's a simple website where anybody can go and create a public profile. So you can have about.me slash Oliver Modi. About.me slash John OBD. So when you do that, if people Google you, is that the first thing that pops up? What is one of the first things that actually show up? And if people internationally want to invite you for, for certain opportunities and they want your profile, just send them that link. And they have everything about you, your, your videos, your appearances, pictures. It's all there, and they can use that to access you. Access you. So many Nigerians don't even have that. So if I ask a Nigerian, send me your, your, your profile, they'll be like, okay, wait, let me get back to you. And you're just trying to put it together. It should be publicly ac accessible. When it's Googled, they just pick it out, and, and you, you stand a better chance than most people. Fantastic. So this is yes. for those who have not yet made it up to Wikipedia. Yes. You can do with about.me, yes. which is also fantastic. Yes. So what other tips would you give to young people who are looking to position themselves internationally? Right. So I realized on a couple of my trips that your book is like your complimentary card. So instead of handing someone your complimentary card, you hand someone a free copy of your book. So having a book, authoring a book, places you on a higher level of relevance. It makes you look, it positions you as an authority, hence the word author. So it's, it's, it's more powerful when they introduce you as the author of that subject area that you claim expertise at. And I know this table I'm shaking, I'm also on it because everyone's asking me, when's your book coming out? Where's your book coming well, someone out? Someone wrote a book for you, didn't they? Well, yes, I haven't sanctioned that book for public viewing yet, okay. <laughs> you know, but I realized that it was quite a big thing. And so if you wanted to be positioned that uh, if you wanted to be positioned maximally on the world stage, you need to have a book 
on that particular subject matter that you're claiming expertise in. What role does social media have to play in positioning yourself for international um, recognition? Okay, so social media, I talk about social media as an offensive strategy and a defensive strategy. So if anyone plays sports, they'll get that analogy. So offensive strategy means everything that you're doing should be showing on your social media handles. Your social media handles should be clean, should show, should show you as a person in authority, as a, as a person who is responsible, uh, someone who can be trusted with opportunity, and they have to show you as someone who is also an expert, someone who is efficient, someone who is effective at the work they're doing in the business community or in the local community. And let's talk about the defensive strategy. It's something I'm really passionate about because uh, in this area of where people talk about free speech, free speech, free speech comes with its responsibilities. And our model of free speech comes with these risks and traps. Social media is one big trap especially for young people of our generation. And I posted something on my Instagram stories early this morning where I said that, look, not every comment section is open for your participation. You're injuring yourself. We heard in the news, was it this month or last, where someone's Harvard admission yes, was rescinded and, yes, and because of comments he made when he was 16, 16. years old. Yes. So the things that you're doing now on social media, in years to come, people are not going to say, oh, that's what became be that. They did not have sense then. No, you're going to be judged retroactively for what you did in your days of ignorance. So why do we have to go through that? So we have all this savagery going on on social media. And all these people who are commenting and leaving all these senseless comments, I get it. You don't know that one day you're going to want to be more. But when that day comes, your reckoning will come. And let's hope that your slate is, your, your, your slate is clean. But let's save those who want to be clean. Maybe your days of ignorance are over and you want to start on a clean slate. There are actually some software that can clean up your social media activity, right? I remember I was speaking somewhere and someone said, ah, John Abidi, I've seen your first, I've dug deep into your Twitter handle and I've seen your first tweet. And I said, that's not my first tweet. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to do your clean up as well. Yes, indeed. You know, I wasn't born with plenty sense, right? So <laughs> we all had to grow up, right? So yes. someone said it takes 21 years to be 21 years old. You know, mm, so you know, we all true. had to grow up. So there's this um, app called Go Cardigan. GoCardigan.com. You can go there. It's free to use. You can delete your Twitter, um, your Twitter. Twitter history from a particular time. So let's say you started having sense in 2016. You can instruct that software to delete everything you ever tweeted before 2016. Please, can you call that app again? Go Cardigan. Go Cardigan. So for those of you, us, you <laughs> who want to go and clean your Twitter history, does this apply to Facebook as well? No, it doesn't. OK, Twitter history, because you probably tweeted things you shouldn't have a few years ago. I think that's a place to give you a clean slate. It's more like giving your life to Christ. Yes, because look. Most young people, most people are going to, they're going to wake up. Everybody will have sense. I give everybody, forget how foolish it might appear to be. At some point, you're going to have sense. So it might as well be now. <laughs> All right? And when that happens, it's going to be hard to do a lot of cleanup. So if this is the point where you start cleaning up, all the better for you. They say the internet never forgets, all right? But if we are frugal about how we use the internet, you can clean up your sins and start afresh. And for those of us who, not, not us, you, <laughs> those, <laughs> those of you who have a lot of negative search results on Google, because people ask me this, oh, John, when I didn't have sense, I did certain things, and there's a lot of negative search engine results um, for my name when I search on Google. So I so, said, you know what? All you have to do is start bombarding Google with positive stuff. All right, so take your own PR very seriously. When you do something, you speak at an event, you do a charity event, something that's positive, make sure that you get the high-ranking blogs to report it. You can get it done for a token. Yeah, I was even going to ask you how yes. well people can ensure that when their name is searched, more yes. important stuff about them is coming out. Because there's some people that you want to speak to. Yes. The first thing people usually do is they Google you. Definitely. And you're checking, this person doesn't have any digital footprint. Yeah. Nothing of relevance is being said about this person. Yeah. So flowing from what you're saying, how can one make themselves more relevant on the Google space? Yes, so you have to take your own personal PR very seriously. When people say PR, they often imagine an agency and a lot of money, but it's all about documenting online the things that you do. And it's much more effective too when other people are reporting what you do than you reporting it yourself, right? So if you, you, you get a, a, a number of blogs to simply report what you do, and even when you do things, make sure you document. For example, John Abidi is here with Oliver Modi on Hello Nigeria, and he talked about how to become relevant from the third world. Put a video clip, 
put an excerpt, and just keep on documenting. And so when you search John Obidi, as a matter of fact, when you search John Obidi, you know, you see a lot of amazing stuff. And most of those things I have put on there myself. I have made positive um, um, effort to make sure that people actually put on those things. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's an ongoing PR and strategy. And it's an intentional effort It's an intentional parts. effort. So you, you don't just see my Facebook or my Instagram. Those will appear. But I want to be, posi I want to be positioned as someone who is influential and valuable. Finally, before I let you go, let's talk about making yourself available for opportunities, fellowships. There are many people who want yes. to do fellowships, but they just don't know how to start or you know yes. how to, what will make make their application stand out? What advice would you give to people like well, this? Well, a lot of people, they have so many agencies and organizations all over the world who want to partner with Africa, but they don't want to have to come down here themselves. And so if you are that person of value and you have demonstrated that in your community, they would much rather, rather channel those resources through you. And so everyone needs to get active in their local community. Have a cause. It's not enough to just represent yourself as a business person. Me as an example, if you ask me, John, what do you do? Mm. You're passionate about personal development. Yeah, so it, it depends on, on, on where. So if you ask me, what do you do for money? I'm an online business consultant. But if I'm being asked by maybe the United Nations, what do you do? I would say I'm the founder of Head Start Africa, the largest mentoring platform in Nigeria. Right? Different things to different people. I'm an online business consultant, but when I was given the keynote at the Mandela Washington Fellowship, my topic was how Africa's youth can tackle access to education. What's that got to do with online business? But I was doing that in my capacity as the founder of Head Start Africa, a mentoring platform. All so right. everybody really needs to find a course. You that need to find a course that, that you're supporting. They're passionate about yes. and then go all in. Yes. As a matter of fact, if, if, in, in the United States, there is hardly any successful businessman. I'm, and successful, you're a millionaire, you're a businessman. You hardly find anyone who does not have a charity. It's a basic requirement. Well, we see lots of them giving half of their earnings to charities. Yes, indeed. The, the richest people give even the most to yes. charity. All right, I'm sure there's been lots of helpful tips that we all have taken today. There are many things I didn't know before this conversation, so it's been an absolute delight having you over, John Obidi. Thank you for and having me. And I know you give out more information about things that you do and helpful insights such as this on your social media platform. So how can people follow you and keep up to date with all the goodness that you share every day? All right, so on Facebook, I have a Facebook community. It's called Head Start Africa. So just go to Facebook and search Head Start Africa. I have a mobile app called the School of Wit. So that's where I put out wisdom for the third world African to achieve global relevance. Uh, so you go to the Google Play Store and search for School of Wit with John Obidi. Or just search for John Obidi, the School of Wit mobile app is going to show up on the Google Play Store. Um, and also, we have a Telegram channel called Head Start Africa. So if you are on Telegram, just search Head Start Africa. And so that's where you can find us. Now, all these things are very important that you key into opportunities like this because I'm very passionate about young people making better quality of their lives. We understand that the situation isn't so convenient. You don't have the best of things here, but we can make do with what we have and be the best at what we do. So please take hold of all these opportunities. Follow all the... So clean your social media handles. You don't have to follow people that would just put unnecessary pressure on you on the gram and all other platforms. Follow handles that would educate you in inspire you and give you helpful tips to navigate through life. Adulting is hard enough. You can actually make it easier through this. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank now. you for having me. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.